Over the weekend, you will have seen we reached another vaccine milestone with more than 5 million vaccinations administered. 1.8 million New Zealanders are now fully vaccinated. That represents 43% of our eligible population. Of our people aged 65 and over, we've seen vaccination rates for first jabs hit over 90%. In Auckland, 82% of the eligible population have now had their first vaccine. Now that just shows what is possible in terms of reaching a large number of people. And now we need to keep going. One reason for that is because it helps with a reduction in restrictions. Another is because it helps us change up our border settings safely. In early August, we laid out our plans for reconnecting New Zealanders to the world, an event I know many of you were present at. This work was based on the advice of Professor David Skegg and his public health advisory team. As a result of their advice, we designed a stage approach to ease our border settings once we had more New Zealanders vaccinated. We gave an indicative date of the first tranche of that work in the first quarter of 2022. But to prepare, we had a work program that started this year, and that included our self-isolation trial, an alternative to MIQ, where people can isolate in their own approved premises for 14 days. Today, Cabinet made further decisions on this trial, including the timeframes. Further details will be released by the Minister later this week, Minister Hipkins, when the expressions of interest open. But here are the broad terms. The self-isolation pilot will be capped at 150 people and focus on businesses and employees who are required to travel internationally for work purposes. There will be a small number of government officials, but the vast majority will be from the private sector. Those in the pilot must be New Zealand citizens and residents, and they must, of course, be fully vaccinated. Those interested in applying will need to arrive in New Zealand from the 30th of October until the 8th of December, with final travellers leaving self-isolation by the 22nd of December. The reason we are focused on work-related travel is because of the extra layer of protection that having an employer with some skin in the game provides. This will be coupled with a monitoring and testing regime. Further details will be provided by Minister Hipkins on Wednesday. I should add, it is not our intention that self-isolation only be available to business travellers in the future. This narrow scope now, though, is for us to kick off safely while we begin the design work. And I note our trial is similar in size to the trials that are just beginning in Australia. In terms of next steps, expressions of interest will open on Thursday and will remain open until the 9th of October, with successful applicants advised on the 15th of October. No need to enter expressions of interest now. Minister Hipkins will set out all the details on Wednesday. Expressions of interest open on Thursday and will remain open until the 9th of October. So plenty of time for people uh, to register their interest and we'll give, give at that time details on where people can do so. While this is a pilot, it gives you a sense of where we intend to go on our borders with a wider range of options for safe return to help ease pressure in our MIQ system in the future. At the same time, we're working on building a greater evidence base for shorter periods of isolation in the future as well. It's our expectation that further down the track, it may not be necessary for everyone to have to isolate for a full 14 days. All of this, as I say, will make a difference to the bottlenecks that have been experienced with our very tight border requirements that have helped keep us safe and keep our domestic restrictions low for so long. In further border reopening work, I can today update you on quarantine free travel for our RSC workers ahead of what will be a busy summer harvest period for our agri hort sector. In September, we announced that the first stage of one-way quarantine-free travel with Samoa, Tonga and Vanuatu will begin in October, initially for RSC workers from those countries, as they provide most of our seasonal workers. Today, Cabinet has agreed that quarantine-free entry for RSC workers can begin from the 4th of October for Vanuatu and from the 12th of October for Samoa and Tonga. Those who are travelling must have at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccination before they arrive and will have their doses completed once they're in New Zealand if they have not already done so. They must isolate at their place of work on arrival and they must take a COVID test on day zero and day five and remain in isolation and in their bubbles until they have a negative day five test. They will be doing that on site in their workplaces. We'll keep a close eye on this and our intention remains to broaden eligibility for quarantine-free entry to New Zealand from these countries and Tokelau, 
when we can be sure it is safe to do so, fully aware of how positive the scheme is out for our Pacific neighbours. But starting with REC workers enables us to trial what is a pseudo form of shortened uh, isolation uh, enabled in order to ensure safe entry to New Zealand uh, and access both for these workers and um, uh, for employers. But the main driver of our recovery will ultimately be vaccination. Vaccination is our way forward. It's, as I've said, the golden ticket to getting back to a life that is much freer from restrictions than we experience now. The research tells us that those who are hesitant to get immunised are most likely to listen to family, friends and medical professionals. So the best way to get vaccinations up so we can safely reopen our borders and enjoy life generally domestically is for each of us to check in with our family and friends and have a conversation around why you were vaccinated, how you felt afterwards, and what it would mean for you uh, if that person was vaccinated too. I've seen in Northland an initiative that means a small sports club receives a donation for every jab given, a clear message that a vaccination is not just good for you, it's also good for our national pastimes. Everyone can be a vaccine influencer, whether you have one or 100,000 followers, we can each help encourage at least one other person to get vaccinated, and every vaccine counts. Just like our hard and early work helped to stamp out COVID in the beginning and keep our economy open, your vaccine now helps us navigate through the next steps, which is a safe reopening, a reconnection to the world, and a reconnection with one another.